This is a quick video over the trans membrane electrical potential. So, what causes the trans membrane electrical potential? It is actually the sodium, sodium, potassium pump. It's also known as the sodium potassium ATPase. So the sodium potassium pump, what happens is from the inside of the cell to the outside, it will transfer three sodium ions. And it will, in the same process, it will transfer two potassium ions from the outside, two potassium ions from the outside to the inside. Now in the same process, it creates a slightly positive charge across the membrane. And this is due to transferring three positive ions out and only bringing back in two positive ions. So we get a slightly positive charge across the membrane. But this is only a few millivolts. A cell at rest, a cell at rest, has a voltage across it, or an electrical potential across it, of about negative 60 millivolts. So if this pump is only creating a few millivolts, where does this negative 60 millivolts come from? Additional voltage difference actually occurs because the pump creates two different types of concentration gradients. Concentration gradients. It creates one for the sodium and potassium. And it also creates that electrical gradient. Gradient. So the the and the electrical gradient is read by voltage. So this negative sixty volts is is what basically what the electrical gradient would be for a resting cell. But for just this process, what we have done so far, we only have a few millivolts across the, the cell. Where we get the 60 millivolts from is the potassium that was just transferred across, it actually diffuses to the outside again. It, so it's inside and it diffuses back out. And when it does that, it increases the voltage across the membrane. Now, you have to be wondering, why is a positive ion like sodium crossing a membrane to go into a more positive area. We know that negative and positive charges want to be next to each other, so why is it leaving a negative area to go to a positive area? What's well, actually due to the concentration gradient of, of potassium being greater than the electrical gradient. Now there is a way to actually describe this, and a way to describe it is with Gibbs free energy. Now, Gibbs free energy is, at its most basic concepts, you can think of it as how is something going to happen. Now, for our case, if Gibbs free energy is positive, that means the potassium is going to leave the cell. If it is negative, if delta G is negative, that means potassium is going to come back into the cell. Now what happens when Gibbs free energy, or delta G, G is zero? That means that the potassium doesn't want to go into or out of the cell. That means the concentration gradient is pushing the potassium out of the cell just as much as the sodium is, or the electrical gradient is pushing it into the cell. So they equal each other. So, so how can we actually calculate the delta G? Well it's based off of the concentration gradient at part which is the ideal gas constant times the absolute temperature in Kelvin times the natural log of the concentration on the inside over the concentration on the outside plus the 
z factor, which for are the charge of the ion, which is z. So for potassium or sodium, it's uh, positive one or plus one times Faraday's constant, which is a constant, times the voltage across the membrane. Now this is the the part due to the concentration gradient. So you can think of this as the diffusional driving force, where it wants to go from a high concentration to a low concentration. And this part is the electrical force, where it doesn't want to be next to a positive ion, it wants to be next to a negative ion, or a negative area. So this is the electrical. So how does this really apply? Well, let's just kind of Let's look at it, clean up some of this. So what happens as this pump is allowed to just continuously run? Let's just say it keeps on running. So as it runs, potassium is being pumped in and it's diffusing on out. So it's diffusing on out. And as it diffuses out, on out, the outside becomes even more positive. And as the outside becomes more positive, the electrical gradient increases. So then it's, it can't just diffuse on out nice and easily. This concentration gradient starts getting a pushback from the electrical gradient. And, th and so there will come a point where they will actually equal each other. And they will completely just block each other from transferring any ions across or potassiums, uh, potassium ions across. So how could we actually get that value? Well the value actually occurs when the voltage is a negative 98 millivolts. millivolts where this is a positive value and it's positive because the concentration on the inside for potassium is greater than the concentration on the outside and since it's a logarithmic function it's going to be positive due to that ratio if it was the sodium so this is potassium if it was the sodium concentration it would actually be negative because the concentration of the sodium on the outside is greater than the concentration of the sodium on the inside but we're not worried about something we just want to focus on on potassium and remember, this is a potassium channel, and it does not let anything else but potassium through. So as this is a positive, this must be a negative for the Gibbs free energy to equal zero. And, it, and that happens when the voltage is equal to negative 98 millivolts. Now earlier I said the voltage of a cell at rest is negative 60 millivolts. Why is it not negative 98 millivolts? Now the reason it doesn't reach this negative 98 millivolts is because the potassium channel actually reads the voltage across the membrane and it will shut off at some predetermined voltage. Now not only is it the potassium channel shutting off, there are also sodium, calcium, or chloride, and calcium channels as well that open and close depending on the voltage. So when you combine all that, you get a cell at rest with approximately 60 millivolts across its membrane. Now one last thing I want to show you is what happens to, let's say for some reason, the sodium ion channel opens. So let's pretend that this is no longer a calcium or not no longer a potassium channel. Now, the sodium has just been building up on the outside. It hasn't been transferring back in. It's just been building up. So these, this is now a, let's call it a sodium ion channel. So what happens with the sodium ion channel? It, it let's say it opens up at maybe uh, 70 millivolts. It opens up around there or I, I have no idea what the actual voltage is, but at some point it just, let's say it opens up for some reason. So I said that the Gibbs energy, when it is negative, means that something wants to come into the cell. 
and when it's positive, it wants to go out. So what's the value for the Gibbs free energy for just where we're at? Let's say we're at maybe, let's say the cell's at 60, negative 60 millivolts. So not only, not only is this electrical gradient, this component negative, but the diffusion for sodium across the channel is also negative. The concentration inside the cell is less than the concentration on the outside. The concentration on the outside is a lot bigger. So you have a diffusional diffusion diffusion, and electrical gradient pushing the sodium into the cell. So it really wants to go into, into the cell. And that's the really important thing about the electrical gradient. It's not only because it can affect how channels are opened and closed, but it also allows other things to go through really quickly. You got this, this becomes a really big negative delta G. And that is really impressive. And remember, when it's a really big negative delta G, that means the sodium wants to go into the cell. Now that that's the diffusion and electrical gradients working together, and it's just, I believe it's, I think it's beautiful. And that's all I have to say about the transmembrane electrical potential of a cell. I may have gotten a little too excited.